Okay? Let's pray and we'll, we'll get started. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you have uh, loved us with this eternal love and you have given your word, your standard uh, to uh, teach us everything we need to know about faith and life. Lord, we just ask your blessing upon this time that you would be the center. Uh, Lord, I, I beg you that my words uh, and my sin and my pride don't get in the way of your perfect message of grace that we would be edified by your spirit and that we would be united um, by your love. And Lord, we ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we're continuing our, our series in Romans, and we've been a couple weeks in, in chapter 2, and I'm going to finish chapter 2 today. Uh, I don't know if you understand this, but there's a lot of people outside the church who think that the church is judgmental and hypocritical. I don't know if that's news to you or not, but uh, the Barner Group did a recent study, and some say that they asked unbelievers that the rejection of Christianity, 87% said that the church was judgmental, and 85% said it was hypocritical. And there's that joke, you know, I, I don't like the church because there's a bunch of hypocrites there, right? And the, the response to that is, yeah, and there's always room for one more, so come on in. <laughs> um, and so, so what I like to say, and... and Everything's kind of fitting together, and I love when a plan comes together, but this, hi, my name's Matt DeBach, and I'm a recovering hypocrite, all right? And, and, and I think that's powerful because, because the true hypocrite is not the one who's here today. Because if you're a true hypocrite, you don't need anything. You don't need Jesus. You don't need, at least you're here, right? The, the true hypocrite thinks that they can do it themselves outside. Now, does it mean that there's no hypocrites here? No, I'm once a hypocrite, what? Always a hypocrite. But I'm a recovering hypocrite, and I'm going to try to explain that, what it means. We, first, we have to define hypocrisy. Um, it is the practice of claiming to have moral standards or beliefs to, one, to which one's behavior does not conform. There's a disconnect between what you say and what you believe and your behavior. Another definition is false appearance or virtue or goodness while concealing your real character or inclination. Ooh. So now you're hiding something and you're, in, you're concealing it. Uh, I wasn't going to do this, but there, there's a joke I heard and it's a dad joke and you know how bad dad jokes are, but I'm a dad so I get to tell it. Um, what do you call fake spaghetti? Impasta. <laughs> All right? I know it's really, it's really stupid, but imposter. And what, what, what happens is you're, you're, you're pretending to be something. The original, the, the original word comes from acting. You're acting a part, a theatrical part. Um, and, and sometimes we do that. Um, it, it's, it basically questions how many masks you have. Because in the olden days, you'd have one or two actors, and they'd run off stage and put on another mask. And they'd run off stage and put on another mask. And so one person would play several roles during the, the show. And so the question is, how many masks do you have? Do you have a mask for work and a mask for church and a mask for home? And, and, and what we're doing is we're playing a part. And another, uh, another word that really struck me was to pretend. All right, and I, you know, I remember, Daddy, let's make pretend. Right? And they'd be a doctor or a lawyer, but we really weren't. We were imposters, right? We were pretending to be something that we were not. And, and I, even, I even say it all the time. I, I say, hey, listen, fake it till you make it. Right? Have you heard that? All right. Well, fake it till you make it. I, I, that's really what? Hypocrisy. Okay? Um, and th this is a, a, it's a conscious use of a mask to fool the public. It's impersonating. It's play acting. It's like uh, you sound like someone else and you work like someone else and you look like someone else, but you're really not that person. Now, I looked it up and there's like over a million hits on this, but why internet has made us into hypocrites, all right? Why? Is because when we put a picture out there, how many filters do you really need to present your picture? All right, because you're presenting something out there that's really not you. And, and I, I see it all the time. I mean, I, families who, who on Facebook, they're smiling, but you know that they're not really smiling in, public, in, in private. All right, and, and they're, they're presenting something that they're not. 
And, and in church, a hypocrite is someone who, who wants others to see them as holier than they are. And to achieve this goal, they hide what was really going on in their lives. And, and, and this is when, like, we have this face, this church face. And we said, how, how are you? And she just said, fine. And Marlene just said, fine. But we have a church face. <laughs> and no matter what happens until you leave... It changes, right? You walk in the door and all of a sudden, <laughs> because this is not the place to be real, or is it? And so we, we've got to talk about this, and, and, and Paul is, is going through chapter 2, and he's gone all the way through this, and, and now he really wants to talk to the Jewish people who are thinking that they were holier than the Gentiles and the other people because they knew the law and they had privileges and they treated all the other ones like the other non-Jews as dogs and people out of it. And so um, this is something that we need constant reminder of. And, and, I, and I guess it would be a self-examination. Are you a hypocrite? Um, and like I said, I'm, I'll be the first one. I'm not a hypocrite. Well, I am. But I'm not that much of a hypocrite because I'm telling you that I'm a what? A hypocrite. One of the problems is to be able to actually say, yeah, sometimes I'm not perfect and I do things that doesn't match up and my life's a disconnect and pretty much I'm broken. All right? So, so, so that, that's, the, that's where we're going with this. And, and it, it's a terrible sin. Um, and it's very subtle, so it, we always need to be reminded of it. If you, if you would turn with me to Luke chapter uh, 12, verse 1, and I'm just going to read the second part of it. It's Jesus speaking, and, and, and this is to put us in the context a little bit. He, he's speaking to the Pharisees, Luke chapter 12, verse 1. And I'm just reading his words, uh, the, the ones in red. It says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And this leaven is like that stuff you put into bread that's like yeast that gets into everything. And what he's basically saying is, listen, hypocrisy is everywhere. And it's slippery as a fish. You think you get a hold of it and it slips out and it's somewhere else. But it's always there. And we need to be reminded of this. So now let's go to Rome, the Roman Oh, let's go to Rome, too, if you want. Um, Romans chapter uh, 2, verses 17 through 29. It's a bigger section, but it's, it's treating the entire idea of what it means to be a hypocrite. So here, here we go, chapter 2, verses 17 through 29. But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast in God and know his will and approve of what is excellent because you are instructed from the law... And if you are sure that you are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of the children, having the law and the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? While you preach against stealing, do you steal? Why do you say one must not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law dishonor God by breaking the law? For as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. For circumcision indeed is of value if you obey the law. But if you break the law, your circumcision becomes uncircumcision. So if a man who is uncircumcised keeps the precepts of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? Then he who is physically uncircumcised but keeps the law will condemn you who have the written code and circumcision but break the law. For no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly or is circumcision outward and physical, but Jew, a Jew is one inwardly and circumcision is a matter of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. May God bless our, his holy word. So what I want to do today is I want to describe hypocrisy and then we're going to look at the results of hypocrisy and then I'm hopefully going to give you a way out of hypocrisy. Um, and so if we look at it, the first thing, uh, three components, the description of hypocrisy. A hypocrite is one who tends to be general and theoretical and intellectual about the truth in their faith. They have a lot of what? Head knowledge. They know it. 
and they, 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 they approve of the law, and they love the law, and they memorize the law, and they love the Bible. Listen, we can get addicted to Bible studies. We just love it, don't we? I mean, we, I just added another Bible study. <laughs> Let's get more Bible study, right? More and more and more. The problem with that is it's only here. And, and sermons become like intellectual treats. They're like, mm, that was so good, right? But, and you know, I love donuts, all right? Donuts don't give you too much nutrition if they only stay where? In the head. It sounds good, and it's really a great treat to come here on a Sunday. But if you don't, what? If it doesn't feed you, if it doesn't make you stronger, if it's not applicable, it means nothing, so, so be careful, and remember, I'm asking you, are you a hypocrite, is if you love a head knowledge of Christianity, and it is a joy to talk about, and you boast about how much you know, and it's just fantastic, be careful. Now, listen, I, don't, I want you to do that, all right? I want you to love the Word of God. I want you to meditate on it. But we in, in Hope Chapel and Hit, you know, we want it to go from the head to the heart to the hands. All right? And it can't just stay in the head. Now, a hypocrite also, so he, he tends to be general and theoretical, and a hypocrite also finds a kind of complacency. He's very pleased with himself. Um, he doesn't really lack too much. Um, there's not a lot of humility. Um, and just so you know, I'm probably the most humble hypocrite you know. All right? Listen, we can take pride in our own what? Humility. I hear it all the time, Pastor, you don't know. You couldn't even imagine how much I've suffered. I've suffered more than anybody. We can take pride in our own what? Suffering. Suffering. Well, a hypocrite finds this complacency, and he looks at other people and compares himself to other people. Turn with me to Luke. Don't lose uh, Romans, but Luke chapter 18, verse 11. This is the story about the the tax collector and the Pharisee who go into the temple. Luke chapter 18, verse 11. The Pharisee standing by himself started to pray and he says, God, I thank you that I am not like the other men extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. And that's what, it, that's what a hypocrite does. A hypocrite looks at everyone around them, but never looks at who? Themselves. They think they're religious guys, they're good guys, and they, the, the, the problem is that they almost become too self-confident, right? You know, like a know-it-all? Ooh, I hate know-it-alls, all right? It, Un sabe lo todo, no? I like it in Spanish better than English. All right? Un sabe lo todo is a persona odioso. Right? <laughs> really? It, 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 someone who just knows it all. And, and, and you're, you might be at a party and you try to have a conversation with them, but there's no conversation because they're the law on everything. I'm very bad when that happens. Sometimes I'll just get up and walk away. And my wife always gets mad at me. Man, you can't do that. I said, I know, but he knows it already. <laughs> But they're so, they know it, and, they, they, and, and they, look, they're a guide for the blind. You know the guy said, let me show you how to do it. Let me show you. Let me show you how to do it. A light for, the, a light for those in darkness. Listen, you don't know. I, got, I know. Let me show you. I'm a structure for the foolish. I'm complete. I'm boastful. This type of person is terrifying. Terrifying. Why? Because he's looking at others as if he has made it usually those people are not even here, right? Because they don't need anyone. So, tends to be general, complacent, and really self-contrary. Now, the, the second is what a hypocrite does. A hypocrite teaches and preaches to others, but never to himself. It's the type of guy who has a beam in his own eye, but he, he focuses on the splinter in the, the other person's eye. And he, he, there's no application, it's vain, it's useless, and he, he can apply the truth to others, but never to himself. It's always outside of himself. And usually you hear, you need to. Right? And the response is usually, 
who are you to judge me? You're not perfect, right? Practicing what we're supposed to preach. He is actually guilty of doing the same things. He tells other people not to do it. He says, don't steal in you what? Steal. Don't commit adultery and you're committing what? Adultery. There's, there's even one, remember the saying, do as I say, not as I do. And I have a bunch of sayings because there's hypocrisy is for sayings. It's called the pot calling the kettle black. And in Spanish, it's el burro hablando de orejas. <laughs> All right? Listen, be careful about judging other people and be careful about how you're doing it. But it's, it's not only in those type of things. Have you ever said, stop being so selfish and not realize how selfish you're being? Be careful because usually, and this is, my dad told me this a long time ago, if you hate something enough, you actually become it. Because God says, oh, you really hate that? Well, guess what? That's who you are. Remember, when you judge, three fingers come back at you. But you hate what you become. Have you ever said this? He said, stop yelling! <laughs> and guess what you're doing? Yelling. And you're, I, I can't stand the moodiness. And guess who's the most moody person in the room? Um, <laughs> yeah, we know, we know, Pierre. And that brings me to my next point. See, everyone can see through a hypocrite, right? The only one who can't see a hypocrite is, a, is who? The hypocrite. Um, but th there's more. How about this one? Oh, you lack self-discipline. You ever heard that one? And the person who lacks self-discipline more than anyone else usually says, you lack self-discipline to other people. I've heard this one, too. Oh, you're so, where's your joy? And they're walking around like this all the time. <laughs> and, and that's what we do. We judge other people, we condemn other people, and we never turn it back on ourselves. We're, we're almost playing the part. And then he, he actually dishonors God through breaking of the law, and he boasts about the law and his knowledge of it. Now, the principle that it, in these first parts is a hypocrite in practice are guilty of doing the very things which they denounce in others. And that's why the world hates it. But I, I want to stop talking about ourselves a little bit because the damage of hypocrites is great. All right? Look what it says in verse 24, Romans chapter 2, verse 24. The name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Because of your hypocrisy, because of what you do and how you're living your life and what you're doing, people are watching, all right? You, so the Gentiles judge God by what they saw in the Jews. Remember, they were made, we're made in the image and the likeness of who? God, we represent him. So when people look at us as his body, as his followers, in the same way we can't blame people today is because they're judging Christ and Christianity by you and me. That's a scary thought. Now, people outside the church are looking at us and saying, what is the point of being a Christian? You can't blame them. You can't stop them. We're, you know, it's interesting. Remember Charles Barkley? He, he does uh, uh, commentary on, on TBN. Um, for the pros, and he's a, he's a big, he was once called the round mound or rebound, and he's a big guy, and uh, one time he was a fantastic basketball player in his time, and he kept on getting into fights, all right? And he kept on saying, I am not anyone's role model. That shows you how old I am. But that was huge, that was huge. he was a public figure, and he says, I'm not anyone's role model. Well, guess what? He is, whether he likes it or not. And we, whether we like it or not, if we call ourselves Christians, we are watched, looked at, observed by people at work, by people outside, by people in traffic, by people everywhere. And we are, quote unquote, role models because we represent something bigger than ourselves. The world is watching. Listen, you know why there's so much hypocrisy today? Because there's cameras everywhere. 
There's cameras. Did I, you hear what I just said? There's cameras everywhere. And there's no place to hide anymore. And that's kind of a good thing, kind of a scary thing as well. But you better be who you say you are because if not, it's going to be caught on what? Camera. So not only do they judge Christ, they judge the truth about God in the same way. You know, Christians, oh, well, you know, we have, uh, we have, our own, we have truth and you guys are in darkness and, and we have this marvelous light and, and the truth will set you free. You ever hear that one? The truth will set you free. And then the world looks at their lives, the Christian life, and he says, that's what truth leads to? That's the type of marriage that truth leads to? Look at them when they're ill or when they're dying or when things don't go their way. It is incredible how we as Christians who believe or supposedly believe this, when things don't go our way, suddenly it is like we've forgotten who we are. Oh, but things haven't gone my way. We talk so nice when the sun is shining. Oh, God is so good. God. It's wonderful right here, right? And as soon as you leave the back door, what happens? He's forgotten me. All this other kind of stuff enters our head. And, and, and that's called what? Hypocrisy. When there's trials and tribulations, it doesn't seem like they have anything. When Christianity 101 means something is when chaos comes to your front door. What do you believe when the sun's not shining? Who are you when, the, when things don't go your way? Are you still a role model for people to see and say, listen, he's got something different. I want some of that. Not only that, but they, they judge salvation, the salvation of God in the same way. Now, remember I said it's like we're pretending? Well, don't pretend to be saved. Either you're saved or you're not saved. It's, you can't be kind of pregnant, <laughs> right? You're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. All right? Well, you're either saved or you're what? Not saved. But if you say you're saved, don't pretend. Listen, we talk about deliverance and newness of life and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The third person of the Trinity lives inside of me. And the promises in, in, in John, he talks to the, the lady by the well and he says, if you believe in me, waters, live waters will be overflowing and you'll have all access to me and you're adopted and you're, you're saved and all the air, all spiritual blessing, all the riches and searchable riches of Christ, his joy, his peace. Yes. And they look at us and they say, I'm kind of busy on Sunday morning. Right? See, there has to be a change. And, and, and I, I, I don't really want to be a hypocrite anymore, right? All right, that's why I, I'm a hypocrite. And, and see, Paul doesn't have a problem. Paul says, I'm the biggest sinner in the room. All right, and if you want to go there, I'll, I'll put myself up against anybody. Well, me and Alan. Um, <laughs> right, Marlon? Um, but I'll put myself up against anyone. All right? Why? Paul says, I'm the first in the room. Therefore, because I'm the biggest sinner in the room, therefore I can do what? I can talk about sin. The hypocrite doesn't want to admit that. The hypocrite wants to say, look at all those people. I'm a little bit better than that. They judge the salvation. They judge the power of God. And I'm so tired of hearing this. I tried Christianity. It doesn't work. Have you heard that one? Well, they've tried going to church is what they've tried. They haven't tried the newness of life found in Jesus Christ. That's why when I say go and tell people about Jesus, it is not to invite them to Hope Chapel. Invite people to Hope Chapel after they know Jesus so they can be built up. Your job as a people of God, as non-hypocrites, is to go out there and actually say, this is what I believe. At school, at work, at home, at wherever. 
So then he, he, he comes up with this last section. It's verses 15 and following. And, and he's, got, he's, got, uh, he's got the Jews on the ropes because he's really trying to convince them. They're about to tap out. Um, but, but he's got to destroy this, this hypocrite. And, and, and he says the final argument. And this is where the Jews come up and he said, listen. All right, we want to go old school, we're going to go old school. We're not going to talk about Moses. We're not going to talk about the law. We're going to the original OG. We're going to Abraham. All right? We're going to the original. Abraham, the father of the faith, he gave us what? Circumcision. And we're proud of it. (laughs) Right? Now, we're going to change that a little bit because in the New Testament, I'm going to just trade one word all right? And we're going to read it again. The one word I'm going to trade, I'm going to trade circumcision for baptism. All right? Look, I'm going to read it again. We're going to go to John, uh, Romans chapter 2, and we're going to read uh, the, the, the last part, 25 uh, through 29. For, it says circumcision. I'm going to use baptism every time it says circumcision. For baptism indeed is of value if you obey the law. But if you break the law, your baptism becomes unbaptism. So if you are a man who is unbaptized, keeps the precepts of the law, will not his unbaptism be regarded as baptism? Then he who is physically unbaptized but keeps the law will condemn you who have the written code. And baptism, but break the law. For no one is a Jew who is mere, or no one is a Christian who is outwardly, nor is baptism outward and physical. But a Jew is one inwardly, and baptism is a matter of the heart by the Spirit, not by the letter. Praise is not from man, but from God. And I, and I do that to put it in context. But listen, he's talking about outward works here, and, he, and he's basically destroying that. And he says, listen, if you're baptized but live as you have no connection to Jesus... And your life shows no inclusion, no union in his death and resurrection. And there's no connection or unity with Christ. And you live the way you want in the world. Your baptism becomes as if you were what? Not baptized. Because remember, baptism doesn't save anyone. It is just an outward symbol of an inward reality. An inward change. And so he's saying, listen, don't get hung up on how many things you do and how many Bible studies you go to and the baptisms and all the sacraments. No, that's just the outward thing. It's got to match inside. And, and, And Jesus says that all the time. He goes, you're like whitewashed tombs, right? You look really good on the outside, but inside there's all this kind of death. Or the glass that's dirty. We wash the outside of the glass, but we don't wash the inside. And he says, no, all the problems come from the inside out. So he sums up and he says, listen, you Jews, you Christians, it's not about being outwardly Christian and going to church and doing all that stuff, which is great. Neither is that baptism is is outward in the flesh because, listen, if I dunk you or dip you or sprinkle you or send you out and get a fire hose, I'll put you in the ocean. I don't care how much water it means. You cannot wash away sin with just water. And, and, and it's not about that. But he is a Christian or a Jew, one inwardly by baptism that is of the heart through the Spirit. And even Jesus said that, I will baptize you with what? Fire and Spirit. So this inter- external side of this inward grace has to show, but it leaves no room for boasting about externals. There's nothing more to boast about. And so what makes a Christian a Christian is not his relationship with God, but relationship to God. It's about the inside out. Now, they're saying, listen, don't rely on tradition, study, baptism, church attendance. It's not what saves. Don't take me out of context here. But listen, your faith doesn't even save you. No, your faith, I I hear it all the time. Well, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. What do you believe in? What What have you deposited your faith into? Because we have to be very clear on that. Because just by saying, I believe, you can believe in yourself. That's the, that's a big thing right now. I believe in myself self-esteem and no one loses and all that other kind of stuff. Believism does not save. What saves? We must rely 
only upon the Lord Jesus Christ and his person and his work and what he did for us. Now, we've got this new nature and everything like this. So, so where do we go from here? Well, the church is 87% judgmental, 85% hypocritical. Um, you know why? And, and, and this is key, and I was thinking about it. There's not a lot of churches anymore who are starting with the bad news. There, there's not a lot of churches anymore who are preaching sin and repentance. They're only sitting, they, they, you, usually we start halfway and say, God has a wonderful plan for your life. Perfect, because I have a wonderful plan too. <laughs> if his plan matches up with my plan, we're good to go. And so what's happening is the church is a factory. Get this, the modern church is a factory for hypocrites because, and this sounds like I'm being critical and maybe I'm being hypocritical, but not here because I preach the gospel every single week. The reason why we're making hypocrites is because we're not preaching the full gospel. So where do we go from here? End of chapter 2, Paul wants them desperately not to trust in anything but Christ Jesus. And so, so where do we go? First, I want you to leave with this. Focus on the bad news first. Focus on the bad news first. Now, it was funny because we just saw the, the video of uh, the luggage, all right? And it, that was a perfect intro for me. But listen, it, this is not a one-time deal. I would say every day, focus on the bad news first. All right? Why? Well, what's the bad news? Well, first of all, I, I got this neat saying I found. It says a proverb. I tried to look it up in the Bible proverb. I couldn't find it, so it's just a blanket proverb. But it's better to be a sinner than a hypocrite. That's good, right? It's better to be a sinner than a hypocrite. So what does that mean? Well, the bad news is that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We're all in this together, and we're all sinners. There's no one, if you put yourself up to the perfect law of God, can stand before God. There's no one. No one's better. No one's worse. We're all condemned justly. The price of sin is death. And Paul just says, I don't care about your tradition or if you've been baptized or what dates or whatever like that. If you don't live it, if there's not been a transformation, it doesn't matter. So we have a sin problem and a death problem and a works problem. And he says, listen, if you really want to do this, just be real with your what? Your sin. That's a tough thing to do. But if you want to be healthy, if you want to stop, and like I said, I'm a, I'm a recovering hypocrite. If you hang around me long enough, you're going to say you're a hypocrite. All right? Because I'll say, oh, I'm losing weight, and then I can't stop eating a donut. Right? <laughs> you'll see it. If you hang around long enough, you'll see it. And I try my best, but there's something about the sprinkles that... You just, you just have to take it, right? All right, now, now you can call me a hypocrite, but, I'm, but you know, self-awareness is a, a powerful thing, all right? And what, what Paul is trying to say is, he's saying, listen, be self-aware of who you are. And it's better to be a sinner than a hypocrite. Don't hide anymore. Don't fake anymore. Don't impersonate anymore. Don't pretend anymore. Because the crazy part about it is everyone knows you're a fake impersonating pretending because they look at you. So I said, focus on the bad news first. So every day, say, listen, I don't, I don't really deserve any of this. Remember we talked about how good God is and how blessed he is and how much we receive. I don't, I don't deserve any of it. And this is why. And you can make a list. It's number two. Focus on the bad news first. Second, rejoice in the good news. Now, this is the only way you can rejoice in the good news. If you know the bad news, then you can actually rejoice in the good news. Now I can say, by the grace of God, I am who I am. Not by me, not what I've done. And then who gets all the glory? God, because then you can tell the story. So listen, I was in my misery, and God talked to Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, and said, listen, I need someone to go down there and pay the price for this guy. He's a hypocrite. He's hiding. He's a pretender. He's an imposter. <laughs> you like that one, Michael, right? You'll like it better when you're a dad, but it, it will work out. All right, listen, we don't, he saw me. He sees us. 
You know, I, I, he says, be careful of the leaven of the Pharisees. Right after that, he says, you know, the solution is I know it all anyways. You're not hiding. You're not faking anything. I know your heart. And I said this last week. The greatest thing about this is God then came as a man, 100% man and 100% God to die on the cross for us, knowing that he was going to die for what? Hypocrites. And he still did it. And on the third day he died, on the third day he resurrects, and we're gonna celebrate that next week at Easter, at next month in Easter. And resurrection means now my union in Christ, because if I deposit my faith into him, he died and he rose again. And the same thing happens to me. All I have to do as a recovering hypocrite is to understand the bad news of the gospel, that that's what was, that's who I was. But now I am saved by grace. And then finally, look, keep on understanding grace. That's every day. Try to understand grace. Focus on grace, the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. Listen, you don't get... If we don't understand grace, we're going to be called hypocrites the rest of our lives, not even recovering hypocrites. But if you understand grace, you can say, yes, I am a sinner saved by grace. Call me whatever. Call me the names you want to call me. Put the sin to what you want me to be, and I'll say yes. Me and Paul, the first among sinners. But understand the grace and mercy of Jesus, and then give some of that away. Don't judge other people. Don't be hypocritical. Don't point with that same love and that same grace and that same mercy. And, and it's very easy to do. All you have to say to that person that you know who you need to talk to about this, just say, listen, I love you enough that I want to tell you about a better way. And, and it's not that I've achieved it, and it's not that I've, I've made it, and it's not that I, I, I'm perfect. I'm far from it. But that's the greatest thing about the gospel is that I'm a sinner, and I'm, I'm worse than you are. And I've done this, and I've done this, and I've done this. And, I, and, and if you want to list it, list it out. And I need to tell you this is because I've been there, and there's a different way. There's a better way. And I love you enough, and I'm going to tell you that better way. His name is Jesus. Now, how can anyone call you judgmental or a hypocrite if you do it that way? Share his mercy. Share his grace. Share his love. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you for what you're doing here in Hope Chapel in our hearts, Lord. And you've now worked in us, Lord. We, we now come and we repent because we... We have been hypocrites. We have not represented you. You called us salt. You called us light. Letters written in blood. And there are times and places that we put on masks and we are not true to you, the Savior of our souls. We have pretended to be something else for the praise of men and not for the praise of God. And we repent, Lord. We, we have sinned and we have fallen short of your glory. But the greatest news ever is your goodness. And you are a good, good father. That in spite of our hypocrisy, despite of our sin, despite of who you are, you have still loved us. You've still brought us into your truth. You've still saved us and delivered us and given us into newness of life. You've still done this so that we might be broken vessels, sinners saved by grace to preach to other sinners who need to be saved by grace. Lord, that you would raise up an army here at Hope Chapel of recovering hypocrites for your praise and your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen.